I have a question for you. Have you ever rage quit a video game like where it made you so mad you didn't play it anymore? If so, what did you do after? Play another game, go outside, create a cryptocurrency worth billions of dollars that's set to become the largest one in the world? No, me neither, but this guy did. Meet Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum, one of the world's biggest cryptocurrencies. So let's rewind a bit. I should probably explain how video games are responsible for all this. A few weeks back, somebody managed to dig up Vitalik's old about.me page. I had honestly never heard of this website before, but it's been around for over a decade and looks like it's supposed to be almost like a virtual business card that you pay monthly for. And after seeing that, I now understand why I've never heard of it. Vitalik's page is pretty outdated, but it's also pretty interesting. He has a section that people can copy paste for conferences, articles, and of course, propaganda materials. Then below it, he has what he calls the more interesting bio which lets us get to know him a bit better, like what his favorite drug of choice is, which is green tea, or his political affiliation. Oh wow, I wonder if he's a Republican, Democrat, Independent. Oh, he's an intellectual hipster meta contrarian. I can't believe I didn't guess that. Anyway, jokes aside, what really makes it so interesting is this little paragraph right here. I happily played World of Warcraft during 2007 to 2010, but one day Blizzard removed the damage component from my beloved Warlock's Siphon Life Spell. I cried myself to sleep, and on that day, I realized what horrors centralized services can bring. Oh yeah, it reminds me of when RuneScape added their Evolution of Combat update that everybody hated. I thought to myself, I hate centralized services. I have to destroy them. You know, like everybody does. Anyway, back on topic, this still doesn't explain how this event caused the creation of Ethereum. Well, Vitalik goes on to say that this update was actually enough to make him quit the game entirely. Now with games like WoW, you have to devote a lot of time to them to become good at them or really make any significant progress. It can take years to do everything the game has to offer, but since Vitalik had decided to quit, he needed something else to fill that time. So in his own words, he began searching for a new purpose in life. Keep in mind he was only 15 at the time, so his life's purpose being World of Warcraft kind of makes sense. But then again, I know people twice that age that have the same purpose. What doesn't make sense though is what he latched onto next. He discovered Bitcoin, and as he learned more, became extremely passionate about it. So much so that he began writing a blog called Bitcoin Weekly for just $1.50 per hour. He figured out pretty quickly that he could probably make more than that on his own, and co-founded Bitcoin Magazine. When he entered university a year or so later, he continued working on crypto-related projects, and then, a year later, dropped out to pursue them full-time. One of those projects later became Ethereum, a community-run technology that powers the cryptocurrency either, and thousands of decentralized apps, not centralized. Now, I don't have time to fully explain what Ethereum is, and I'd probably bore most of you, but it's honestly pretty cool. It's responsible for a ton of really great projects in the crypto space, and unfortunately, a ton of really, really bad ones too. But regardless, I think it's awesome, but it's even more awesome that its creation can be directly traced back to some guy at Blizzard deciding that the Warlock Siphon life spell was too strong. If you enjoyed today's video, you should check out the one I did about the version of Bitcoin from 1921. Believe it or not, but Henry Ford may be to thank for Bitcoin's eventual creation. If that sounds interesting to you, check that out by clicking the video on the right hand side of the screen right now.